Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to Transport Fever 2, where we are building the Reno, Thousand Oaks, and Roseville Railway. So, last week was all about getting our brick chain all up to speed. We've obviously fed in um, more than enough stone to be able to take it all over the world, pretty much. Um, but it was all about getting enough deliveries out to Rancho Cucamonga, to Santa Clara, to Fontana, and also over here to Thousand Oaks to really grow that construction materials plant and um, allow us to, to really extract as much profitability as we could from it. And we're looking pretty good at the moment. We can absolutely extend Indianapolis as well, which will be handy. I think we might even be able to go up another sort of level with our um, production. Probably not actually, because we're only halfway there. And we may look at doing that this episode, but there's one thing I want to work on before we do any of that. And that is uh, getting some tools. So, as you can see, we've got Santa Clara that needs tools and Thousand Oaks. If we have a look in here, and if we look at our overlay for cargo, which um, the wonderful Ken, who's been, I think, one of my subscribers from the very early days of my first Transport Fever 2 video, said, you're a dingus. You don't actually need to go and try laying a station or click on buildings to see, <laughs> you know, what building accepts what. You can just use this wonderful overlay. So thank you very much for that, Ken. Um, as you can see here, Thousand Oaks needs a lot of tools and that'll help the town grow even more. So that is going to be our first sort of goal for this episode, is getting a tool chain up and running. As you can see here, we've got a forest, we've got a sawmill, and we've also got a tool factory as well. Um, we do have another forest over here in Indianapolis. We will need to feed that one in and that's fine because we will be, you know, extending our line to Indianapolis anyway. So no issues there whatsoever. Uh, but we're going to get the nice easy part of the line build to start with and it is this sort of section of it here. So I'm going to get a nice terminus station set up here, um, feeding directly from our forest. We can get it in here. Yep, lovely. Uh, no overheads at this time. And then what we're going to be doing. So I am going to be using this uh, log train to also feed into the tool factory as well. So it is going to, you know, sort of need to um, go both ways. So we'll run through or straight past our tool factory and then we'll come back via the tool factory as well. So I'm going to set up our tool factory as a... Uh, two platform off the bat and that will fit in there quite nicely and I'm hoping this will feed in fine it might be a bit high actually it won't even connect it's refusing <laughs> that's okay we can fix that with not much of a problem we just need to go through so we might need a little bit of a tunnel here um, actually need to get rid of it anyway because we put overheads so I'm wondering if we can just connect sort of directly in. Why won't it connect? It's being weird. Okay, perfect. Maybe a little bit more expensive than I would have hoped that would be, but it's a, you know, it's a start, it's fine. And then what we're gonna do is just gonna bend this train around. It's gonna be a, <laughs> a bit of a slow one going through here. So I'm not doing well at this at all. Okay, that took a lot of effort and I think it doesn't look fantastic, but it's um, it works and it's not like, you know, going absolutely terribly. I've just connected up our um, tools factory to the main line as well, so that'll allow us to um, I guess sort of run through with our tools or anything else that needs to feed back in that direction. So a bit of a triangle and I think that is fine. All right, next we need to get our train organizer is going to run on this line. And I think this one is going to be fairly simple. This line will not conflict with any other movements. So I think we're going to go with one of those um, small diesels we recently put onto one of our fuel lines. So let's have a look at that. Yep, so we've got our Alco double H 600 or a eight H H 600. So we've got our Alco little diesel, pretty much a shunter here. Um, 
we will get one of those purchased and then we will just get as many of these flat cars on that we can or that is reasonable I suppose to be running. So we'll take it up to 180 meters for the moment. It's still mediocre, so it'll, it'll be okay. Um, but once again, it's not gonna be holding up any other traffic, so that is fine. So we'll buy it. And I'm gonna get it assigned to the new line that we've just created. Which we'll need to rename as well. Now, while that initial train is, you know, getting over to start its run, we'll build the second section of our network. Um, so I am going to extend our um, freight network through to Indianapolis. That will allow us to um, take construction materials over here as well. And it's a nice, easy sort of join up we can, we can do from this forest. Obviously, there is a sawmill over here, uh, but it's probably going to be quicker and cheaper for us just to take it directly to our other sawmill. So it won't be a direct connection from this line. We are actually gonna break off over here and head over to the other side. That will allow us to also um, serve Rancho Cucamonga with some passenger service as well. Okay, and we've been waiting a little while for some cash to come in to um, support us getting our second log train on, but I think we're there now. We've got 16 million in the bank. So I think we should be able to get a nice decent length train uh, pulled by Mikado in to, to help out. So I want a train with the same capacity as our diesel, which is 168 units. And I'm hoping we can get to that. Yeah, fairly easy actually. So we'll get that purchased and we'll get that on our new line, Indianapolis to Rancho Wood. And that will basically, what it's gonna do is that will double the amount of um, wood coming into the sawmill, which will, if we look at our sawmill, we need two wood for one um, planks. So that will allow our diesel here to have a nice, easy trip back to our tool factory without too much effort, without too much waiting around to load. So it should be a good, easy um, little bit of money for us. Another thing that I'm noticing is that this stretch of track here from Roseville through to Santa Clara is really being, you know, pushed to the limit right now. Um, the amount of trains running on this is probably too many for us to use passing loops now and we will need to expand it to a uh, fully double tracked. So, I think I'm going to start to do that over the next couple of years while waiting for some cash to come in to take tools um, through to Thousand Oaks. The line share of the work is now done, I believe. Just need to make this connection here. And then we just need to signal this area and um, we are, should be hopefully all done and all upgraded.
All right, so that should be a nice, easy run now. Uh, for all of our trains, that should significantly increase the capacity we've got to work with. So yeah, really happy with this upgrade and that should be helpful uh, moving forward, I think. Alrighty, so we now have our two feeders coming into the sawmill and obviously we've got planks going over to our tool factory. So we're now pretty much in a position where we can start running some tools. And our first uh, location is going to be Thousand Oaks. I've had a bit of a think about how I'm going to handle it. Because um, obviously from our existing um, goods station, if we pop on our helpful cargo layer, we're not really getting any coverage pretty much at all um, from our... existing station. So we've got two options here. We can either run a new station over, you know, probably about here or so, or we can use our existing setup and utilize our truck station a little bit more to, I guess, to best sort of utilize a city. And I think we're going to go with the second option because, I mean, if we're to put another station in here, Thousand Oaks is pretty much going to be surrounded by rail. It's a very busy area a very built up area in terms of rail already and we don't want to, you know, contribute even more to this being like a landlocked little city because this is going to be our essential, our, our home city and we don't want it to be completely ugly and a gross place to live, you know. So we're going to do some updates to our freight station over here and then we will set up a line and get a train purchased hopefully. So we will be adding a second terminus track, which I'm going to lay that all down here. And we might be able to squeeze in another small uh, cargo building just so it looks a little bit better. So we'll pop that in there. Beautiful, look at that. Fantastic. Uh, we do need, of course, to have a, another platform here as well. Apparently we missed a small stretch of track, so obviously we're gonna fix it up as well. Perfect, so we're all good to go. We put down some wires here, which I didn't wanna do, but it is what it is, I seem to just keep doing that. And we will make a connection up here. Now in terms of the train we're gonna run here, let's have a look and see. So Thousand Oaks has a demand for 89 tools. So it's not massive at the moment, uh, but obviously it will build up over time. We will need to get a truck unload stop here as well, which if we turn this on, uh, we should have almost full coverage here. So I'm going to lay that down there. We'll get a new line set up as well. And that should be all we need to do to make this work. Now, for our train we're gonna be running, so we'll be running boxcars, because that's what we need for tools, and we have a capacity or a, a demand for 89 at the moment, which is gonna be, it's gonna be a fairly short train. I think we might pop it up by like two um, to build in some, you know, potential for growth um, should we very fast start upgrading, which I, I suspect we will. Uh, in terms of the train we're going to run, so we've got two options. We've got the Mikado, the good old Mikado that we've been running. We do have this large 412.2, um, but I think it's a bit overkill. So I think we are going to continue to stick with the Mikado um, on this setup for the time being. So we will get that one set up and we'll set up a new line. And we should be all good to go now. 
Beautiful. And while that's running out, it'll take a while to go over there, fill up and come back. We're going to make a few adjustments to the network while that's happening. We should have enough cash. Uh, first thing I want to do is we've got these old steam, I believe they are, uh, trucks running. Or they might be just early diesel trucks. Um, in any case, they're pretty old. They're 35 years old. So we definitely, I think, want to uh, be replacing those and getting some more modern trucks running on some of our lines here. Yeah, so we've got five of these and they have a capacity of six. So 30 all up. Yeah, that maths checks out. Um, so what we're going to do then, we're going to get these changed over to something a little bit better, a little bit larger, a little bit, um, you know, a bit more reliable. So we've got these Opal Blitz tank trucks. They're 14 each. So we can replace, you know, our current fleet in Thousand Oaks for fuel with two. But we might just pop up the capacity a bit. We might pop it up to about four or so because I have a feeling we're not covering all the demand for fuel uh, based on our current fleet. So we're going to get four purchased. We will get them on our Thousand Oaks fuel. And what I'm going to do is duck over there and we're just going to sell off all of our old vehicles as well. So that should be a faster and a little bit more reliable surface, I'm hoping. Another thing I've noticed is that our old passenger line, which we've only got the one, you know, short train running on, is probably a little bit overloaded by now. We've got quite a few passengers at all of our stations, and we also want to actually extend it to Rancho Cucamonga and also to Indianapolis, which we haven't had a chance to do because we just don't have the network capacity. So let's find our passenger train. Here it is here. And it's running at decent profit, um, but yeah, we could definitely do more. We could potentially even run a slightly faster train as well. So let's have a look and see what's available in terms of upgrading this line. And one thing that's immediately jumped out here for me is this Pioneer Zephyr. Um, it's a lot faster, 177 versus I think 80 was the, uh, what is the capacity on our existing train. It's more expensive to run, significantly more expensive, and it has a lower capacity but I think it could be a nice balance because it's being run, you know, more than twice as fast. It should allow us to get passengers in and out of our stations a little bit easier. So we can initially buy one of these to supplement our existing train. And then once we're happy with how it's running, we can potentially look to uh, replace it again or, or replace our um, leftover steam train with this Zephyr. So I think we're gonna do that. We're a little bit short of cash to do it right now. But I think in not too long, we'll be right there to make that purchase. And there we are, right on time. Let's purchase that. We're going to go into the negative almost immediately, <laughs> but it's okay. So we'll set it onto the main passenger line. And now we can modify that line to actually allow us to take in our new uh, stations that we've built and not run to. So Rancho Cucamonga we've got, and we will fairly shortly be building one to Indianapolis as well, but we just don't have the cash in hand right now to make that happen. And now, sort of last thing we need to do right now is to get some trucks running to circulate our, um, our tools over to the area that will require the tools. So we're gonna go with these Opal Blitz Tarpaulin trucks. We will get four purchased, definitely not 40. And we will set them to our new line that we've set up. And that will also trigger our um, tool factory over here to start producing more tools to go towards, um, you know, those destinations over in Thousand Oaks. So, nice. Alrighty, and to finish off this episode, we're going to complete our line to Indianapolis. Uh, we're not going to use a terminus station because potentially we could want to go through to Stanford and maybe on to other stations later. Not sure if it's better to go via Indianapolis or to maybe go through some other means to get there. So... We'll leave ourselves some options open anyway. So we've got a fair amount of passengers that we need to cover to get this uh, train line working. So what we could potentially do if we butt this up fairly close here, we're going to cover most of it. We'll need to remove a building, but it's okay. What I'm actually going to do as well is we're going to start using high speed tracks. Our Zephyr does run up to 177 kilometers per hour. And obviously we're not really supporting that right now with a, um, you know, track infrastructure to actually allow it to do that. So we're going to start over time upgrading to allow our Zephyr to, you know, use its full track speed. 
So as you can see, this is a really easy connection. Like there's really nothing we need to do here at all. Um, what I am going to do, however, is we will extend our high speed through to Rancho Cucamonga, just as sort of, you know, stage one of this upgrade we'll be doing over time. Perfect, so we've got full coverage all the way through to Indianapolis. We've got a lot of cash on hand right now as well, which I have plans of what we're going to do with that next week, but I will keep that a secret for the moment. Another thing to point out is, where is Thousand Oaks? Over here. Thousand Oaks now accepts food as well. And machines. It accepts five types of cargo, so this is going to, <laughs> you know, be a bit of a challenge for us to fully um, satisfy the needs of our, you know, of our home city. But if we have a look around, we do have some options. So I've actually been considering food um, to, you know, for Rancho and also for Fontana over here. So we do have some areas here that are, look to be fairly rich in food. So we've got options that aren't too far away. Um, but that's something for us to consider next week, I think. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. You can find links to my social media in the description. Big shout out to Twitch. If you have Twitch, please jump on there and give it a like. It helps me out a lot. Uh, but until next time, I'm Bob Dendry. This is Transport Fever 2. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.